Trucking is a lifestyle. Guys, we hear that cliche all the time. In fact, a lot of our uh, our videos actually focus on the business aspect of trucking uh, and how to push through and get through. But today, this video is a little bit different. It's going to talk about the actual lifestyle and what we mean uh, by those details. What are some of the personal changes that are going to have to take place in order to be successful? So there's about seven topics. Um, uh, without further ado, let's get them started. Number one would be stress management. Um, I really feel that having the ability to manage people in situations is going to be tremendous uh, to the it, it, it's going to be a tremendous amount of of you being successful or not, because as much as, uh, you know, people don't believe it, but as a as an owner operator now, your success is based around other people's decisions as well. Receivers, shippers, unload, lumpers, brokers, every, uh, DOT, all of these moving pieces are going to affect you. So understanding all of that and managing that stress because if you don't manage it properly it can affect the way you function on booking a load trip planning uh small decision making even safe driving absolutely it bleeds into everything so just to have the know-how as as far as like asking yourself how good am i at managing stress managing stress managing people uh just going through the situations uh one example that they like to use is uh you know you can if you approach people a wrong way, uh, you can be held up at every shipper, at every receiver. You can uh, you can encounter a very small problem and escalate every single problem, and then your life as a as an owner operator, as a business owner, is going to be very very difficult. I personally been in the situations to where uh, you you come to the you know to the place of delivery, and you know some somebody in the receiving. Uh, is having a bad day and we just tell you man it's gonna be probably not until 4 p.m until until we can get to you <laughs> and if you flip your and, top and if if i would blow up uh that's probably gonna be 4 p.m the earliest even though right now it's like 9 a.m <laughs> uh but i can i can play my cards right and uh, i've been in the situation where, oh no problem don't worry about it can i by the way can i drop the trailer at, at the door and you guys can take your sweet time no problem i'll just go somewhere to grab something to eat just what, whatever do do my things uh can, can i do that and then you see the individual you take it super cool and the individual just flips around and uh seems like that 4 p.m is not so serious anymore because now he's thinking all right that idiot is not getting upset. I'm not getting what I'm trying to get from him. This is different. So he's gonna he's gonna park a trailer in my dock. I'm gonna have one dock stuck with that stupid trailer of his. And we're like, you know what? Hold on. I think dock three is open right now. Just park it in. We'll, we'll get you out before we, we do other stuff. So there you go. The overall success, guys, is your stress management. Remember, no matter what the situation or who's at fault, every time you're gonna run into an issue, you have more to lose than the person in front of you. So play your cards right. Yes, because other people that you encounter on the road, they get paid by the hour. You get paid by by your time and by your effort. So don't waste your time with people that are having a bad day. Always be nice, polite, and for the most part, you will come on top. There you go. So another uh, topic two, learn the truck. So whether you're mechanically inclined or you're not, you know, like I think there, you either are, or you're not. I mean, some of these guys out there can actually probably change a tire on the truck and the trailer on the side of the road. They got the tools, the, the air hose, they got everything necessary. And another guy could call roadside. So those are two different. Uh, it doesn't it, it's not a deal breaker if you're not that mechanically inclined that you're going to be doing that. But your approach should be a little bit different. You have to plan a little bit more aggressive in regards to maintenance reserves and things of that nature. So for the most part, I from what I've seen, what my experience have been, I'm not a mechanic by no means. Uh, I barely scratch the surface in, in the mechanic terms, uh, but I've been pretty successful. Uh, driving my own trucks and uh, dealing with breakdowns because if you do everything else right the roadside breakdowns are usually gonna be uh, at the bare minimum for the most part if you do things right and let's say every time you go home you take that truck to the mechanic shop or even better uh, you park your truck somewhere you know in the yard of a mechanic shop that you regularly work with 
and let's say you go home and you'll just throw those keys to the mechanic and you're like hey check it out just run through it make sure everything is right uh, something little here or there bothered me while i was on the road and let the mechanic uh go through your truck and fix little issues right now before we escalate and if you do that right plus preventive preventative maintenance and uh preventative uh repairs uh also planned repairs because there are certain repairs that you need to do with like 500,000 miles 750,000 miles and so on if you learn your equipment and you uh you read about it you you find your peers the other owner operators that have similar trucks and how we solve those problems for the most part any big repairs you are going to be able plan for it and you can get them done before you're on the side of the road and now you need that truck to be towed in and get it done right yeah so i think that is that is the key difference so the less you know about the trucks the more you need to educate yourself because the more you know the better it is and the better relationship you need to have with your mechanic uh going uh straight and in, pulling in straight into the truck stop when the truck is already making crazy noises or perhaps is parked on the side of the road is not the best way to solve problems and i see that quite often where owner operator is not doing any preventative maintenance any uh you know preventative uh, repairs we pretty much run until something literally breaks so so that's so that's the key point guys you got to pay attention be proactive don't be uh, don't fall victim to that so have a plan but then uh, again it's not the end of uh it's not the end of a game it's not it's not something that you need to be afraid of or like really really plan for you just got to be aware of that learn your equipment little baby steps a little bit of prevention a little bit of self-education and those major breakdowns that everybody is talking about and trying to scare you away from doing business, we not that common. And if you get a nice low mileage truck, you really have a lot of meat left on that bone. And uh, if you do the preventative maintenance and uh, just a few repairs here and there on a regular basis, your equipment is going to be sharp, it's going to run and it's going to make you money. All right, so communication, guys. This one is a big one. Remember, you're checking. This is for the first time owner operators. So that means you've gone from a company driver to an owner operator. And no fault to your own because it wasn't your responsibility. You know, there's a lot of back moving uh, behind the scene moving pieces to what you're doing on a daily basis. Yes, your function is generating revenue because you're making the delivery. You're doing the hard work, but everything that goes behind the behind the scenes will now be in front of you because you're going to be responsible. So uh, having that ability, remember, this is uh, this is talking about your lifestyle. So if you're an introvert and you kind of like to be left alone, you got to prepare that you're going to have to communicate with a lot of people in order to resolve a lot of issues. Um, you know, you got the safety, you got the DOT, um, you have the brokers and the, and the receivers and the shippers. And so what we mean by all of this is your ability to communicate is uh respectfully and eloquently or or to get the job done right is going to be the more the more people receive you as a good communicator the more they're going to talk the more they're going to give you the more the further advancing your business is going to be so communication is so important to your business i would also i somewhat disagree because i think if you're an introvert that's a really good place to be because i think if you do things right uh tra tracking is really very very simple is that easy business no it's not but it's really very simple and uh for the most part if you're an educated owner operator you know the safety standards uh you follow the the safety rules uh you submit all the forms in a timely manner when the safety is asking for it you're never gonna have to talk to safety really you're only going to have to talk to safety on a regular basis. Yeah. If you always behind submitting forms and it's not that much because if safety have to call you like 25 times before we get one page from from you, you could have submitted <laughs> that and it would be zero phone calls. Yeah, but it, but but it also comes down to okay, if you're taking it all on, right? And now you're about it, you're running late on the delivery and now that you're responsible for it all and your ability to communicate is let the broker call you to find out where you are because you were supposed to deliver two hours ago is very different 
then uh, then uh, you communicating up front and saying, hey, I'm going to be late and all of this. Yes. So to to protect your introvert space, <laughs> if you con communicate to your team, meaning your dispatcher, your safety, everybody that you're involved with on the on the company side, the billing or whatnot, and communicate up front. Don't start communicating when your phone is already blowing up. Then you're going to have a lot of communicating to do. But if you, let's say, running late, uh, tell your dispatcher right away. Don't don't leave people in the dark and in the, in the unknown. Just be like, hey, look, man, I'm, I'm running late. I don't know what to tell you. Something happened or, or whatnot. The truck broke down, this or that. I am not going to make it until that and that time. And nothing personal, nothing against you. It's just a very simple fix. Yeah, If absolutely. you're just communicating a bare minimum, but very, very direct. The problem starts if you don't want to offend somebody and now you start lying to kind of uh, to lower the temperature a little bit. So, for example, if you know your delivery is at 1 p.m. and you know you're not going to be there until 5 p.m. and now you're telling the dispatcher just to make him feel better that you're going to be there an hour late. Now you're creating this avalanche of problems instead of just saying, look, man, I don't know what to tell you. It's 5 p.m. It's yep. not going to get just there any sooner. I'm sorry about that. This is what happened. For the most part, nobody is going to going back and forth and, oh, my God, why did you do that? Or No, it's going to be very straightforward. Okay, 5 p.m. We're going to solve that problem for you. Here you go. So I agree with that piece, though. The keep it short, sweet, and to the point so you can make adaptations and be successful. Because remember, as a company driver, there are guys who were just tracked who were doing a set of work that, you know, the dispatcher was able to gather their intel by tracking you and saying, all right, this guy's got 100 miles left, two hours here. Uh, he called the customer already and he never even needed your participation in order to fix a problem. And as a matter of fact, did you even know you had a problem? So so that that's uh, communication. Keep that on the front end, guys. Um, we got another topic, one, two, three, four. This is number four, right? Yep. Truck drivers never stop learning. Uh, you know, in the eyes of everyone else, it's so easy to move the product, a to, you know, move product from A to B across the country. You know, just pack up a GPS in your lunch and you're good to go. Like there are people who think it's that easy, um, but it's not. So uh, literally it's going to change for you overnight. Uh, so you're always going to have to be able to adapt because going from a company driver to a owner operator, there's a lot of expensive responsibilities you incur, like literally over almost overnight, you know, mistakes now cost you money. Um, not doing the preventive maintenance, all these things are going to cost you money. So you're going to learn a lot of things as you're moving along. I would even say like, you know, probably, probably your level of prioritization is also going to change as you grow from one truck, two truck, three trucks, four trucks at every step of the way your learning is different because your responsibilities change. Um, <clears throat> a lot of what you thought that, you know, a lot of what you thought was easy because it was taken care of for you is going to be different. So you just have to learn that it's not that it's going to be impossible and it's, you know, it's all been done before. So it's, uh, but it's a, it's an ability of you to be able to recognize it. Yeah. Simple as that. When, once you, once you learn the process, the process becomes easier. Yep. And that's across the board. So everything you learn your equipment, it, it just became easier to maintain it. It just became easier to handle breakdowns on the on the side of the road uh, versus somebody who doesn't know anything but the steering wheel. Yeah. So you use uh, use your time wisely and educate yourself about your equipment, about the business. Another way of uh, you know for some of the of the people that are not really looking to get too deep in the business, uh, another option is to trust people that you partner with. So, for example, you don't have to learn the markets, but you have to have a, an operations team in the office that that got your best interest in mind. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for that, I would say most companies have your best interest in mind because your success equals company success. But you want to you wanna check on them here and there because how do you know if your dispatcher is just a dummy? Yeah, you, know, you you got it. You got to check everybody. But at the end of the day, uh, if you if you have a strong team behind you uh, and you trust them and they take care of you, uh, we can do a lot of uh, 
a lot of that other stuff for you that you don't have to yeah, get involved. You know, I've had a few people tell me like once they became owner operators, even though it's still trucking from company driver to, to owner op, man, it, they are like, it's almost an industry change. Things change so much that it almost feels like you're in a complete different industry, but you remain in trucking. Actually, It, it, it is because when you talk to some drivers, a lot of times we like, uh, we want to run at uh, whatever, whatever speed limit is plus five. Yeah. Sometimes when you're an owner operator, let's say a lot of states has a speed limit that's 75. So running at 80 miles an hour is actually going to kill all your profits because your fuel economy is going to go from like uh, 7.5 or 8.5 down to 4.7. Here you go. And now, all right, you're fast. You, you technically only, you know, like let's say 10, 15% faster than the guy that uh, that's going to uh, same freight at 65 but you're making half of the money that he's making because you're burning all your profits in diesel and it's simple if you don't believe him you're gonna learn that's what that's about <laughs> you're gonna learn here we go all right man uh number five it's not your typical nine to five remember as you're adapting your lifestyle to this and asking yourself is this for me definitely have to consider this I mean even if you are currently as a company driver doing that that regular uh you know home every night type of work local uh that will definitely change but the good part is you're going to get compensated for that but once you're buying this truck uh you know you're gonna you have you're gonna have to expand your mind you're also gonna have to operationally be expanded monetary and your current situation will improve overall well that's the good news but you definitely have to be prepared as far as the scheduling goes that you got to be available i would probably say 24 24 7 availability well, if you're an owner operator, once you park your truck, you really don't have to be that available 24-7. If you're home, if you made your delivery, you parked in your regular parking spot and you're going home, not a problem. But yes, you need to account for a, now you're going to be going out of your way on your time off. When you were a driver, the company took care of all those things. Right. Once you're an owner operator, now you have to go and deal with a shop. Now you have to take that truck to the to the truck repair shop. Now you have to deal with mechanics, with payment, with everything, everything, with preventative maintenance. Uh, if you decide to do your own, uh, let's say, plates and licenses, now you have to deal with that. You have to file all kinds of reports in a timely manner, or you can outsource it to the company. That's also uh, for those that just want to get the benefit of trucking and just trucking alone. Uh, we not necessarily have to get involved because most companies will have programs for you. Uh, but again, the more you know, the better it is. And if you plan in the long run to take it a level up, meaning uh, you're no longer one truck owner, you're buying a second, third, fourth truck, perhaps you're starting your own authority. The more you know, the faster all that is going to go. Yeah, that's why I think uh, that leads us into topic number six. You know, I, I really I, I'm a firm believer in this one, man. It's uh, pay attention to your first year. It's the one that's going to teach you the most because so much is coming at you that first year. Right. It's going to be bucket of cold water. Um, not necessarily is this a negative thing. It's just a lot of information, a lot of experiences and a lot of things are going to happen to you the first year. So you want to be aware of your surroundings. Uh, you want to pay attention to your responsibility, your new responsibilities. How could they better be managed? You know, uh, certain liabilities. Now you're going to learn about the insurance costs. What can you do to offset that? You're going to know about, you know, what type of equipment you're buying now. Like, is is buying a money maker better than having a payment? I mean, from every single angle, uh, information is going to come at you. So I think uh, as you're moving along, remain adaptable because. You want to be able to make pivots, but I think small changes are going to steer the ship rather than just making abrupt left turns and to no man's land and you're back at square one. Yeah, I, I, I agree to the theoretical part of this, but my personal experience was very, very different. I really, uh, the first year I did really, really well. I didn't learn much, but I was so afraid. <laughs> <laughs> To, to, to lose my business, to lose a truck, to, to make mistakes that I actually did listen to people and was just doing what I'm told to do. And I did great the first year. Man, I killed it. And then I became comfortable. And then I started, stopped listening to the smart people. And I started to <clears throat> cutting corners, 
making my own mistakes. Was that year two? Exp- that that was more than that. That was year two, three, four, maybe <laughs> <even> five. <laughs> but to my point, year one is the most important because you had to, it straight. <laughs> I got it straight, but I didn't learn nothing. I okay. learned the most moving from that, you know, three to five year of disastrous period when I almost lost everything my business my truck everything because i made so many mistakes because i thought i know everything mm-hmm. and then i had a wake-up call to where i'm i was kind of like uh i did so bad and i saw people around me doing a lot better and the difference was we were just in the trenches getting stuff done without overthinking and I was always thinking, so how do I cut this corner? How do you cut that corner? How do you do this? How do I how do I make more money with like driving less? No, uh, I'll give man. me a load, give me a load tomorrow. I'm I want to know this today. <laughs> yes, yes. And I made all these mistakes, man. Almost cost me everything. And then one day, it was a it wasn't a good day. It was a bad day. You know, sometimes we say you have to hit the bottom. Yeah, you hit it. And then I was like, man, I need to just shut the fuck up and just go to work just go to work shut up and grind yeah and man my life changed in literally like uh i would say in three months i solved all my financial problems you're on vacation i took my family to (laughs) mexico for a first time on vacation man like everything was so so different I remember every winter, you know, with truck drivers, we hate snow. Like every winter I was driving in the snow because I, I was always on that near bankruptcy line. <laughs> so I, I couldn't take time off. I had to always drive, but I did it super ineffectively. Yeah. So. And every winter I was like, this is the last winter I'm doing this. I'm going to, the spring is going to come. I'm going to work like hell. And then next winter, I'm just going to stay home. Period. That's it. This is what I'm going to do. And because I wasted then the next spring, the next summer, and then the winter came again and I'm back to square one and we're not going anywhere and eating yellow snow. And man, (laughs) that, uh, that first winter after my wake up call, I was literally able to just park a truck and stay home for a whole winter. But because, because of that wake up call, I didn't even do that. Here you go. But I, you could have. I could have. I, I financially was in the position to actually do it. Yeah, but see, but then now you get addicted to like, nah, man, it feels too good to be in this position. Why let it all go away? For, yeah, and for- man, I, I was like, never again. And and the challenge, you know, like that I see, because we deal with owner operators all the time. And like, I see a lot of people like me. But it, it's just part of the industry. So so this last the, the last point here maybe has something to do with it, man. Like I really think people will kind of underestimate this. There's a lot of people out there that think truck driving is a low skill job. And um, this is not this is not owner operator is not easy money. No, it's not. You have to uh yeah, you, you know, just because you're a very good company driver, it, a lot of people have the mes- misconception that's going to automatically make you a very, very, very good owner operator. Um, it doesn't really play out that way. Uh, you know, kind of in even in your case that you're talking about, it's, um, you know, just go to work where when you were a company driver, it's probably easy. They're going to tell you, hey, get to work or you're fired. Yeah, you drive in, you make money and that's it. Yeah. So so and, and, and again, some of this stuff is going to come naturally fast to someone some of it just comes a little bit slower and for others it's just never going to come at all because i think a lot of the variables that are in here the you know everything that we talked about the stress management uh learn your truck the communication uh, remain a student uh scheduling all of that plays into you know your effort your energy and how much you're going to put behind it in order to make sure that it's successful um so are you ready for this lifestyle at the end of the day, that's your call. Uh, you read it or not? But uh, I think I think it's a very rewarding, uh, very rewarding business to be in. I think you can take your life from zero to something great in a very short period of time. Even even the owner operators that just say we are in that in that situation where I was between my year two and year let's say five. Mm-hmm. Man. You can solve all your problems in about three months, all of them. You know, like um, here's here's like here's the key, right? Like this is what I say: why it's not a low skill job. In that three four year mark for you, 
you could have walked away at any point. But I think the reality is walk away to where to make this kind of money where you can control it. You can all you got to do is mentally turn it on and you'll see and you can see the gratification immediately as opposed to you're working for someone. And now you got to wait till the stars align. The company's doing good. They identify you as a good candidate or a good employee. And now you're getting promoted for a whopping three percent. So, you know, you're you're in a different scenario where you have a lot of control. Yeah. So maybe that was in your subconscious like. Well, that wasn't my stuff. And this is why even like when I was dragging myself and my family through like the the brink of bankruptcy, uh, I think one thing that really kept me so attached to that owner operatorship, I was like, man, I love my freedom. I love my freedom. I totally abused my freedom. <laughs> well, freedom comes with that. <laughs> I abused the crap out of that freedom. Uh, almost costed me everything. But I think... Uh, at the end of the day, if if you're not lying to yourself and you you respect what was discussed here, I think <clears> you're <throat> in a good place. I do not know. And again, I've been in trucking all my life, so it's hard for me to judge any other industries. But based on what I know, man, you can you can move very very fast in trucking. You can progress very fast. Is that easy? No. Uh, if you hate trucking with all your heart. Maybe it's not for you because the only way to succeed, you can only see the success of being owner operator if you are able to just sometimes shut up, turn off that, you know, little devil's voice on your shoulder. Go home. <laughs> and, and just be like, I'm just going to bang it out and I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And actually to do it, not next week, not next month, right now. I'm just going to make it happen. I'm going to stay on the road. I'm going to keep making money and I'm, I'm going to reach my goals. Yep. 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 Because I even think that once you reach that, that, that monumental moment, like you said, where you can, you can take the winner off if you really needed to. Um, but even though you didn't, I think that that's the important part because like just having the choice of should I, or should I not, you're, di you digest your situation so much different from a different perspective. And if, if we all know perspective is your reality, now you're making decisions a lot better for your business and yourself. So here we go, guys. Hope that helps. Uh, if you're trying to get in the industry, I say just do it. Evaluate what was discussed. You know, these are these things are not going away. We're going to stay in that industry and that's going to become part of your life. But I think it is well worth it because you can be the best driver in the world. You're never going to achieve uh as much uh as much as <clears throat> above average owner operator yep here we go so if you decide make sure you do it do it right pay attention to those who are successful avoid the naysayers because you don't want their outcome you want to pay attention to the guys who are extremely successful by the way guys we are uh we're renewing this uh monthly class right here in uh, mulberry florida just a few miles south of lakeland that we do for all the startup owner operator startup uh, trucking uh, business entrepreneurs uh, if you want to know more about trucking about being owner operator before you get a truck i think it's very important before you get a truck before you deep deep in shit. yeah uh let us know give us a call 863-342-5171 uh, jump on the list and uh, come on over and you're going to learn so much. Or perhaps if you are already a known operator and things are just not going well and you want to know more about my year two through year five, <laughs> register for that class.